Hey, fourth graders, it's me, Miss Tremell, back again for our day two of Number Corner on our second day of school. You may remember yesterday I talked about all the different math workouts that we will be doing during Number Corner, but I didn't tell you that we will not do every single workout every day. Each day we do Number Corner, we'll focus on maybe one, sometimes two different workouts. But every day during Number Corner, we will update our calendar grid. And so we're going to do that first before we jump into the main focus of today. Behind me, you may see our calendar. Yesterday, we looked at all of the calendar markers from the beginning of September until September 8th. And you guys said you noticed some tally marks, you noticed an upside down U, which some may call a horseshoe. And others of you even noticed that depending on the day's date, that's how many tally marks there were, and that's how many in the same number of horseshoes there were. And so you may have made a prediction about what you think today's calendar grid marker is going to look like. Let's see if your prediction is right. If you haven't made a prediction already, go ahead and think about what you saw yesterday and see if you can predict what you may see today. Okay, I'm ready to show you. So here's what we saw for all these other days in September. Today's September 9th, and here's our calendar marker. Was your prediction right? Yeah, there are nine tally marks and nine horseshoes. Tomorrow is going to be our big day to talk about calendar grid, and we'll discuss some of the other observations that you may have noticed and some, some of the other big ideas that we want you to know and understand for calendar grid for the rest of September. But today's focus is all about solving problems. So since we're talking about solving problems, what does solving problems mean to you? Great, it means figuring out what a problem's all about. Awesome. What else might solving problems mean? Could mean story problems, right? Anything else? You're absolutely right. Sometimes we'll have to choose between one of the four operations. Do you know what the four operations are? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So with a story problem, we may have to choose one of those operations or more than one operation. Very good. Well, as we work through solving problems today, I want you to know that our main goal when we talk about solving problems is communication. Communication is huge when we're solving problems. And when I say communication, I mean we're able to read the problem and understand the problem so that we can restate it in our own words. Then we can identify the critical information in the problem so that we can choose and execute a strategy and then explain our thinking. So if you think once I show you today's problem, that you can read it and figure it out quickly, then I challenge you to go through all those different steps with me. Read the problem to understand it, restate the problem, um, identify the critical information that's needed to solve it, then choose a strategy, and then explain your thinking. So I'm going to show you today's problem. And it's called Megan's Marbles. I am going to zoom in for you guys, and I want you to take a second to read this problem silently to yourself. All right, 
I'm also going to read it out loud once because anytime I'm solving problems, I like to read the problem twice. Megan is starting a marble collection. She has 14 marbles. Her friend Patrick has been collecting marbles for a long time. If Patrick has nine times as many marbles as Megan, how many marbles does Patrick have? I'm going to cover up this problem and I want you to restate it in your own words without looking at it. All right, so what did you hear? Megan has marbles. How many marbles? 14, you're right. And what else? Patrick has nine times as many marbles. Awesome job. So the first part in solving a problem is figuring out what the problem is asking you. So what is the problem asking? Okay, so you think it's asking us to figure out 9 times 14. Can anybody add on to that? It's asking how many marbles does Patrick have, right? Anybody else have any other thoughts? Good. Okay, so if Megan has 14 marbles, and Patrick has nine times as many. How many marbles does Patrick have? Does that sound right? Very good. Okay, so now we know what the problem is asking us. Now we need to figure out, well, what information is going to help us solve this problem? So that's the critical information we talked about earlier. Okay, right. you need to know that she had 14 marbles. Okay, what else is important? Good, that Patrick has nine times as many marbles. You got it. So, let's look at the next part, part C. It says, write an equation for the problem. Use a letter to stand for the unknown quantity. Hmm, what is unknown quantity? Right, an unknown is something you don't know. Okay, and what about quantity? Good, quantity is an amount. So let's write an equation. Earlier, you guys said we need to do 14 times 9. So let's do it. 14 times 9. Are we done? Is that our equation? No, we need an equal sign. You're right. This would be an expression, but we need an equation, which means we have something, we have an equal sign, and then we should have an answer. But we don't know the answer yet. Right, it said use a letter. So what letter could we use? Maybe M for marbles? You got it. So we have 14 times nine, and I'm gonna say equals M. We'll make that smaller. And we can put M here. Now are we done with our equation? Okay, so what I want for you guys to do now is I want for you, if you have your number corner book with you, to go ahead and open it up to Megan's Marbles for number corner. If you don't have your no if you don't have the number corner book with you, that's okay. All you need is a notebook or a piece of paper. And so if you're using a notebook or a piece of paper, title the top of your page, Megan's Marbles, and put today's date, which is September 9th, before we move on to the next step. I'll give you a moment to do that. 
Okay, if you're still not there, go ahead and pause this video until you're ready to continue. If you're there, great job. The next part, it asks for us to, oh, make myself smaller here. It says, use the space to solve the problem. Show all your work, including numbers, words, or labeled sketches, and write a complete sentence at the bottom of this page to show your answer. And so now is when I'm going to invite you guys to work this problem out on your own. If you are ready to work it out on your own, then I encourage you to pause this video so that you can give yourself time to work it out before we discuss it. If you've read the problem, you've thought through it, you can restate it. Um, you can find the critical information since we did underline that, but you still need a little help thinking through it. Then you stay here with me and I'll be happy to kind of walk you through what I might do when I'm solving a problem like this. Okay, good luck if you're working on it by yourself. If you're still here with me, I'm so happy that you decided to stay so that we can talk about how or think through how to solve this problem. Just to make sure that we are clear on what we're doing, I'm gonna put the problem at the top of the page. We know that we're doing 14 times nine equals M, which is for marbles. The question asks for us to figure out how many marbles Patrick has, and we know Megan has 14. So, if you recall, the question said, show all your work, including numbers, words, or sketches. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a sketch. I know 14 times 9 means that I have 14 9 times. And so I'm going to create that with my um, base 10 number pieces here. So here's my first set of 14. So that's 10. We know that's 10, so 11, 12, 13, and 14. But I know that I'm not done because how many groups of 14 do I need? Right, now, even though you're home and if you don't have number pieces with you, that's okay, you can still draw a sketch in your notebook or in your number corner workbook. So what I like to call this is um, sticks and dots, I guess, if you will. So for your tens piece, just like my green one here, you can draw a line. And actually, I am going to um, draw that a little bit better just so that you guys can clearly see here what I'm doing. So you can make a line for your stick and that can represent 10. And then you can do four dots to represent your four ones. This will have the same total as this here because we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So both pictures represent 14, even if you don't have those number pieces at home to work with, okay? Okay, so since we know we're not done, I need to create another set of 14. The question is, how many sets did we say we needed? Remember, our equation is 14 times 9. Am I done? No. So go ahead and pause this video so that you guys can complete your sketch. We have 14, and we need 14 how many times? Nine times. You're right. Go ahead and pause this video. Okay, is yours looking like mine? So how many groups of 14 should we have? Nine. Just double check your work, just to make sure that you've drawn nine groups of 14. So yours may look like what I'm kind of doing on the side since I'm using these 10 pieces. You're more than welcome to use your sticks and dots. So that's three, six, seven, eight, and nine. We have to make it 14 for each one. So just make sure you have 14. 
It's always good to double check your work. If you made it this far, great job. You now have a sketch or a model to help you solve this problem. Now, one thing we should have done before we actually started to figure out an answer is to estimate what our answer could be, or even to think about what our answer couldn't be. Just based on my sketch alone, hopefully you know we're not adding 14 plus 9. So we can't get an answer of, what is 14 plus 9? 23, right. Our answer couldn't be 23 because we're not adding. And here we have a model to back us up. So if our, if our problem is 14 times 9, our answer should be around what? You said close to 90? Okay, how'd you get 90? You did 9 times 10 and 14? Good. Anybody think anything different? Just looking at our model, which normally we would do this before we had a model. Oh, you say more than 90 because 14 is more than 10. So great. Today we're actually not going to talk about the answer that you got. Between now and the next time we come together to do some more with solving problems, I want you to solve the problem and get an answer and make sure that you can explain your thinking out loud, whether you have to talk to yourself in the mirror or to talk with someone at home with you, like a sibling, a parent, or a guardian. When we come back together, we will talk through some of the strategies that you could have used to solve this problem. Until then, work hard, and if you're needing a challenge, I have one for you. If you solve this problem quickly and you're like, I need something else to do between now and the next time we meet, then here's the problem I have for you. If Patrick has nine times as many as Megan, and Patrick has a friend named Elise, and she has four times as many as Patrick. How many marbles does Elise have? I'll say that one more time. If Elise has four times as many marbles as Patrick, how many marbles does Elise have? Remember, that problem is completely optional. If you're looking for something else to work through, and you need a challenge, then that's the challenge for you. Until then, work hard, use the model to solve your problem, and we'll talk about it the next time we meet to do solving problems during Number Corner. Thank you so much for making the effort to participate and keep up with me today. I appreciate it. I hope that you have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow for day three. Bye!